Hey, this is Denver Riddle with Color Grading Central, and this is a 12 minute crash course in DaVinci Resolve 12.5. You'll learn how to use it, you'll learn the tools, and together we'll create this really amazing look on footage you can download and follow along with. Also, I want to let you know about a free online live training I'm doing this coming Thursday. We'll go into even more depth. You can ask me questions. It's free to attend. Details are below this video in the description. All right, let's do this thing. DaVinci Resolve is divided into four pages following a left to right workflow where we import footage in the media page, assemble our edit in the edit page, do our color grading in the color page, and finally export our project from the deliver page. It's just that simple. The media page is where we can preview clips by double clicking and import them into the project by dragging them into the media pool. I'm going to import a few pre-trimmed clips from cinematographer and good buddy Chris McKechnie and you can also download these by clicking the links in the description below this video. Once they're in the media pool, we'll go to the edit page and create a new timeline by going to file, then new timeline. We'll give it a name and then click create. This will create a new timeline and we'll drag those clips into the timeline. We can make editorial changes if we like, and once our edit is looking the way we like it, we are now ready to start grading in the color page. In the color page, at the top, we have the viewer, the nodal tree where we keep track of our corrections, and the gallery where we save our grades. In the middle section, we have all the clips in the project represented as thumbnails, and the bottom section is where we have our color tools. Before we jump in and start grading this thing, let's discuss basic terminology for how we define color. The three basic terms we use to define color are hue, saturation, and luma. Hue is the name we call colors, saturation is the intensity or vibrance of a hue, and luma is the brightness or shade of hue. It's also important to know how to read the video scopes which can be super beneficial. We'll bring up the scopes by right clicking on the viewer and selecting show scopes. The two scopes I always use are the waveform in color overlay mode and the vector scope with the flesh line turned on. The waveform lets us correct for exposure and with the color overlay mode turned on, unchecking the Y, it allows us to correct for white balance issues when the color channels line up evenly. If I overlay an image on top of the waveform, you can see that the trace, the stuff you see here, actually corresponds with the image of the two people as they move towards each other. The vector scope corresponds directly with the color wheel and I've overlaid it here for convenience. It shows what colors are in the image as well as their saturation. The further the trace extends from the center of the scope, the more saturated or vivid the colors are. Here's a simple but powerful workflow for color correction. We first correct the exposure or brightness of the image, second the white balance or color temperature if there are any issues, and lastly the saturation by either increasing or reducing it. This will make more sense as we actually do it. Let's first make a correction to the exposure of this image using the primary color wheels. The horizontal wheels adjust the exposure and the pucks in the middle of the color wheels adjust the color. The lift mostly adjusts for the shadows or darkest parts of the image, the gain for the highlights or brightest parts of the image, and the gamma for the midtones or everything else in between. This fourth wheel is the offset control which adjusts the entire image and there are some circumstances where you'd use it. We'll adjust the shadows first with the lift control while watching the waveform. We want to bring the trace in the shadows down until the darkest parts of the image sit right above zero. Then we'll bring up the highlights so the brightest parts of the trace sits right about here near the top. Then we'll brighten the midtones where the skin tones are by pulling up on the gamma slider. This gives us good contrast and exposure. Next, we'll fix the color temperature since the image is looking cool. Our goal is to neutralize or white balance the whites, so we'll want to find something in the image that is white. In this case, we're going to use this part of the image as a reference and its corresponding trace in the waveform. Our goal is to get these color channels to align evenly and when they do, the trace will turn white, indicating that we've achieved white balance. A quick and easy way to do this is with the temperature slider found under the two which allows us to either warm or cool the shot. We'll keep our eye on the trace as we adjust it until the channels match up evenly creating white. Lastly, let's boost the color a little bit by increasing the saturation. Here's what the clip looks like before and after the correction. On the next shot, we'll repeat the procedure, going for a nice balance of exposure with the lift, gamma, and gain controls. 
The color temperature in the shot looks good, so we can just add some saturation. Moving to the next shot, we'll want to match it to the first shot for obvious reasons since they are differing angles from the same scene. To give us a good starting point, let's copy the correction from the first clip to the second one. We'll go to the first shot, open the gallery, right click on the viewer, and select Grab Still. This adds a still to the gallery, saving our correction. Now coming back to this clip, we'll right click on the still in the gallery and select Apply Grade. This copies the correction and gives us a good starting point, but you'll see we do have some matching issues. To help with matching, let me share with you my preferred method for doing this. We'll turn on the split screen view and change the drop down to selected clips. If we now command or control click if you're on Windows on shot one, we can see the images side by side. We can also see them side by side in the waveform, which makes matching a breeze. To match the traces better, we'll drop the shadows with the lift control, decrease the highlights with the gain control, and then increase the midtones. To improve the color match, we'll drag the temperature to the right to warm it up. All right, that's a nice looking match. If say we wanted to brighten the talent's face in the shot, uh, since it's shaded by his hat, we can do that with a power window. We can add a new corrector using Alt or Option S on the keyboard, go to the Windows panel, turn on a circular window, and size and position it over his face. Then to brighten his face, we'll increase the highlights and the midtones a little bit. You can see this correction stands out quite a bit, so we can add some softness or feathering with the softness control. Playing it back, you can see that the talent's face moves, so we'll want to address that. Going to the tracker panel, we can easily and effortlessly track the shape by clicking the track forward button. Isn't that awesome? This is one of the things I love about DaVinci Resolve. In the interest of time, I've already gone ahead and performed color correction to these remaining clips, but let's say in the next shot that, for whatever reason, the director decided that he didn't like the woman's purple hair and would prefer it to be black with red highlights. We can do this with the HSL qualifier tool. We'll add a new corrector, and then going to the qualifier panel using the eyedropper, we'll drag through the talent's hair to isolate it. To see our selection, we'll turn on the highlight feature, the magic wand you see here. To refine our key, we'll increase the low soft, and pull the low to the right. We'll further clean it up with the matte finesse tools. Okay, now let's turn the highlight feature off, then drag the gain control until the hair color is bright orange. We'll then reduce the saturation significantly and darken the hair with the gamma control. Here's what it looks like when we play it back. Worked like a charm. All right, now we're to the really fun part, and that's creating an awesome look for these clips. I'm gonna show you a quick way to apply the same look on top of all of these clips, and this will save time and it'll ensure that you have a consistent look across the board. To do that, we'll select all the clips in the timeline using the shift key to select a row, then right click and choose the option, add into new group. We'll give it a name, calling it warm Southern Cali look, since that's the look that we're going for, then click okay. Then we just need to change this drop down from clip to group post clip. This simply means that when we want to make a change, it's applied to all of the clips. All right, now let's create the look. In the first corrector, we'll start with shaping the contrast, and so that we can stay organized, we'll right click on the node and choose Change Label. In this case, I'll call this Contrast. For this correction, we'll use the curves, which allow us to make complex adjustments to the exposure. And a quick crash course on the way this works, the bottom point adjusts the shadows, the top point adjusts the highlights, and we can make as many points along the curve in between to shape the tonal range. To give the contrast a soft muted look, we'll reduce the contrast by dragging the top point down and the bottom point up. We'll then make a point here and drag up to brighten the midtones. And then another point here and here, and then drag down to adjust the density in the undertones. Now for color, let's add another corrector and call it color. To give this a warm look, we'll click on the blue channel in the curves and drag the top point down, subtracting blue to warm it up. Then with the bottom point, we'll drag to the right, subtracting even more blue from the shadows. Going to the red channel, we'll drag the bottom point up to warm up the shadows. And then another point here and drag down. And then another point here and drag down to create color contrast by pushing cool colors into the undertones. Finally, we'll add some saturation. 
To take this look even further, let's make some secondary or isolated adjustments to make elements in the scene fit better with our look. Namely, we want greens to appear more yellow and blues to appear more aqua or cyan. We'll add another corrector and call it secondaries. Now going to the hue versus hue curve, we can make things like green grass appear more yellow by clicking on the green vector and dragging the middle point up. Now typically grass and foliage tend to have more yellow in them than you'd expect, so we'll want to shift these points to the left. To make skies and water appear more aqua or Caribbean blue, we'll make a point here and here, and then a point here in the middle and drag up. To make these colors pop even more, we'll switch to the Huber saturation curve, click on the cyan vector, adjust the points slightly, then drag the middle point up to increase the saturation for the teal colors. Okay, finally, we want to further reduce the contrast in the highlights so we have even more of that soft muted look. We'll add one more corrector and name it Highlights. We'll switch to the Custom Curve, click on the Y for Luma only, and drag the top point down. Then make a point here and drag up to brighten the midtones. What an awesome look! If you really like this look and you want to save some steps by applying it as a LUT or lookup table, you can download that LUT when you sign up for the free live training. Alright, to wrap this all up, we'll output our project by going to the Deliver page. The Deliver page has four sections, the Render Settings, the Viewer, the Timeline, and the Render Queue where we basically press Go. For this project, we'll output for uploading to YouTube so we can choose one of the convenient presets. We can change the output resolution to 1080p, specify a location for exporting, and finally click Add to Render Queue, then Start Render. It's as easy as that. Now, I know I went through a lot and I skipped over a lot of details, but what I wanted to do is give you the big picture and if you like this tutorial and you'd like to see more, then sign up for my free live training this Thursday. We'll go into more depth, explore color theory, you can ask questions. You'll also get one of my best tutorials on recreating the look of any film. It's a $49 value, and one lucky winner will win a Tangent Rip Control Surface, which is a $350 value. So to reserve your spot, just follow the links in the description below this video, and I promise you it'll be well worth your time, and you'll get a lot better from one simple training. So I hope that you enjoyed this crash course as much as I enjoyed creating it for you, and I look forward to seeing you at the training. Have a great day.